Hey, welcome. My name is Jonathan Brown. I'm the Chief Growth Officer at Trend Hunter. I've interviewed over 400 leaders in innovation and strategy to try to get to the real techniques and rituals that they use to make innovation happen. And that's what I'll share with you today. We're going to start with a couple questions. Do you ever wonder how they do it? I mean your competitors. How they innovate, how they execute, how they get inspired? Of course you do. But are they going to tell you? Definitely not. No one's going to invite you in to their space and just tell you how they innovate. So what I want you to do first off is beg, borrow, and steal. Now this isn't as criminal as it sounds. This is a real program that comes from Bacardi. It actually encourages employees to broker exchanges with other businesses to learn from them. I learned this technique from Andy Del Rosal, Bacardi's VP of Liquid Innovation. He's a real sciencey guy, told me a real sciencey story, and it started like this. They had a couple of their scientists that wanted to look at ethanol fuel production methods. They wanted to see if they could use their industrial waste, things like grass clippings, to actually create new forms of spirits. And so they set out to do just this. They spent months and months researching how they make uh, things like corn into fuel. And immediately it didn't bear fruit. It wasn't a huge success, but stick with me because they filed that f those findings away and later they discovered that tea alcohol was becoming a big trend. I'm not talking about you putting some alcohol into your tea to spike it up a little bit. I'm talking about people actually putting sugar into their tea and fermenting it turning it into alcohol. Now they thought, what if we used the ethanol fuel production method research, but we used the tea as the raw ingredient? They launched something called Project Tang, and over the next several years, they perfected a formula that produced, that's right, Tang, the world's first tea spirit. Now this was a product of this beg, borrow, and steal program. And when I talked to Andy, he said, without giving that permission, the jump to investigate would not have happened. And that's the key to this ritual, is giving people the permission to investigate things that might originally seem like outside of their core function or responsibilities. So let's boil this down for you and I. Just ask yourself these simple questions. How many businesses do you pass every day, maybe on the way to work, that do something better than you and are worth learning from? I challenge you to reach out to them, talk to people there, set up an interview, set up a half-day exchange and go learn about what they're doing. You can often find solutions to problems that you share with them. I got a question for you. I want you to give me a real big smile if you've ever had a great idea. If you think you generally always have great ideas, smile back at me. That's you smiling. Now, the thing is, you're not the only one with a great idea because everyone else that watched this module also smiled. We all think we have great ideas, but a great idea is not enough. It's never been enough. We can come up with all the ideas we want, but innovation really comes down to how we execute on those ideas. And I learned this really early in my career. See, I was working at the LCBO. So the LCBO in the province I live in, the country that I live in, is the liquor store, and it's run by the government. So it's a special kind of dysfunctional. But when I started there, I was young and green and learning how not to use Instagram, but I had an idea, and I thought it was a great idea. See. I looked around and I said, why do we sell the bottles of liquor, but we don't sell any of the things that go along with it on the customer journey? Shouldn't we be selling ice and Advil and dark sunglasses to go with our Bacardi? I thought we should. And so I went through a process that's probably familiar to a lot of you. I had this idea, but I was so new that I didn't know if it was a good idea at the beginning. I told a couple of my colleagues and they really showed me a lot of love. They said, I love that idea. You should definitely bring that forward. So I set up a meeting with the manager and I killed the presentation. I did everything right and they loved it. They showered me with praise and they said, Jonathan, this is great. This is a great idea. Thank you for bringing this forward. We'll run it up the flagpole and we'll let you know what happens. So I felt great. I was elated. I thought maybe I'd get a promotion or something. Uh, maybe we'd start selling other items. I thought this could really change the, you know, the way people look at this organization. And so I waited and I kept working and I waited and I kept working and then about two months later, nothing happened. Same scenario, probably a lot of us have gone through where you have a great idea, you pitch it, you get good feedback and nothing happens. And that's when I realized that a great idea is not enough. We need to think about our internal customers differently. 
And that's why when I got to Trend Hunter, I set out on that mission. I've now interviewed over 400 leaders in innovation, and a lot of that has been talking to them about how they execute. How do they actually get adoption for their ideas? And so that's what this next module will be all about. I'm going to show you innovation tactics for pathways to adoption that cover three different areas. I'll show you one story about creatives, one about sponsors, and finally, a great story from Lowe's about how to use stories to gain adoption.